you've ever decided that you want to play one of your favorite songs on the piano and you buy the sheet music and you sit down and you're ready to go just to realize that the reading process is a really big barrier to your favorite music, I've got great news for you because I'm going to show you how to go from something that looks like this, that's very scary and hard to follow, to... sit down and start playing and enjoying really just in a couple of minutes. If this sounds like something you're interested in, let's just dive right in. When you're getting started playing with chord charts, there are three main things you need to figure out. First, you need to figure out which song you're going to learn because that decides everything. And then the second thing you need to figure out is which key that's in. So we'll walk through this process. That's all going to be written out on your chord chart for you. And then the third thing is which chords do I need in this song. So today we're working in C major. We're going to keep things simple. There are only four chords in the entire song. And now that you know what to expect, let's walk through these elements and how to figure them out, how to find your way around. Step one is just choosing which song you want to learn. Maybe it's your favorite song, maybe it's just a song that you really like, or you like the piano part of that song, or maybe it's just something that's been stuck in your head for a while and you've been wondering if you could sit down and play that at the piano. Once you've chosen your song, I want you to either open Google or open an app that's called Ultimate Guitar. Ultimate Guitar isn't free, but it's really just a couple of dollars per month and it gives you access to chord charts of all of the music that you could ever imagine. And so you're going to be able to get a lot of mileage out of this tool. You can also just Google the name of your song plus chord chart and a lot of options will pop up that way. Sometimes they're free, sometimes it will take you to Ultimate Guitar directly. Um, just make sure that you end up with something that looks sort of like this and we'll walk through the next steps. For example's sake, I'm going to be walking us through Taylor Swift's song, All Too Well. I've chosen this one because it's in C major. C major is a very friendly key to work with, and it sticks to four main chords the whole entire time. It's only four main chords, and we'll come back to why that's so important in a minute also. Then, if you're in ultimate guitar with me, you'll see at the top the title of your song, and then right below that, you'll see the artist. Right below that, you'll see tuning. That's not relevant for pianists. And then underneath that, you're going to see the key, and that's step number two. If it's just a capital letter, that means that the key is major. And if it's a capital letter followed by a lowercase m, that means that you're going to be playing in a minor key. And what I want you to do is always every single time you sit down to practice this song that you've chosen is play the scale that goes along with the song again for example's sake i'll walk you through a c major scale you don't even need to do this hands together the point is you just want to be really familiar with all of the notes that are in your scale so we have c major it's only white keys from c to c make sure that we're sort of in the right world, in the right musical world. If your song happens to be in a different key, I do have lots of scale tutorials on YouTube. I have a lot of shorts set up for you that walk you through the fingerings and all of those good things. You can also just always search in YouTube the name of the scale, piano, and you'll come across some sort of tutorial that will help you further. Then underneath that information at the top, we've established our key, we know where we are on the piano. Then there's a section that says chords. And then there's a really cool feature that they show you actually all of the notes that you need for your chords. And for this song, for All Too Well, we need C major, C, E, G. And then it says the next one listed for us is F major. And it shows us that that's F, A, C. Then the third one that's listed is A minor, A, C, E, and G major, G, B, D. They actually don't pop up in that order in the song. I'm not sure why they're listed in that order here, but it doesn't matter. Before we move on, go ahead and just take a few minutes to familiarize yourself with the chords that you need for your song. So here, again, I have C major, F major, A minor, G major, and you might just hop around between those a few times. And then you're actually almost all the way there. In this uppermost section, it has all of the chords that you're going to need throughout the entire song. If it's more than five or six, maybe don't 
stress too much over doing all of them. Sometimes there are also some chords that are a bit repetitive. If you have any questions on this step, if you have a song in front of you that you think, oh my goodness, I don't know how to get started with this, send me an email, maybe attach a PDF or a screenshot of the, the chord chart that you're looking at and I can get you sorted out. Don't worry about that. That shouldn't be a barrier to entry here because chord charts should really be a very straightforward process for us. We just, as pianists, don't necessarily see them very often. Once you've familiarized yourself with the chords, go ahead and scan through maybe the introduction and first verse or whatever the structure is of your song that makes sense. Just a small little chunk and sort of get familiar with the order that the chords are usually popping up in. So for this song, I have C major, G major, A minor, F major. And again, this is the same nomenclature when I was telling you about the keys. If it's a capital letter on its own, that means it's just a major chord. If it's a capital letter with a lowercase m beside it, it means it's a minor chord. Sometimes these chords can get a little bit complicated. Sometimes we have like C major seven and E seven and E minor seven and what are all of those different things and why are they back to back? Maybe choose something that's a little bit simpler for your first time using a chord chart. But again, you can always send me an email and I'm happy to help you through as best as I can. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's do this scan that I already mentioned. So we have C major, G major, A minor, F major, and then I'm going to scan and see if it's popping up like that over and over again, or if there are any surprises that come along. So we have C, G, A minor, F, C, G, A minor, F, C, G, A minor, F. Um, so, so far so good. It's the same four chords in exactly the same order over and over and over and over. And a lot of pop songs are like this. And this isn't true for every single song. And just because it's a simple harmonic progression doesn't mean it's not amazing music. It doesn't mean that it's not quality music. You can, if you like the music, that's all that you need to know and you can really enjoy this process. So this example is very friendly because it's four chords, they're always in the same order and it's really comfortable to get between these also. Then once you've gone through that initial scan, I want you to start playing. So first of all, you're just going to be playing the chords with your right hand. The left hand will get its assignment in just a minute and it's really straightforward. For now, we're just going to be hopping around to all of the positions. So we have C major, followed by G major, followed by A minor, and then F major. And the nice thing about playing all of the chords in root position, you have to jump around a lot, but your thumb in the right hand is always going to be playing the name of the chord, and then you're going, you're going to be using fingers three and five, and you're just sliding around and finding them over and over again. And one of the reasons we played the scale is because we know that we don't need any sharps or any flats in this entire piece, in this entire song. We're only on the white keys, and so then it really simplifies this process of thumb, up a skip, up a skip. And then you find your G, up a skip, up a skip, A, up a skip, up a skip, F, same process. And that's going to get us through almost this entire song. So you can do that over and over and over until you get really familiar with those changes. And you can find your way through without too much stress, without too much struggle along the way. So then I am going to scan a little bit further. C, G, A, F, C, G, A, F, C, G, A, F, G. So the first time the order changes is in what in this song is called the pre-chorus. We have C, G, A, and then instead of going straight to F, we have G again, and then it goes to F. And then let's see how it moves forward after that. C, G, A, F, C, G, A, F. And then again, we have another pre-chorus and then it's the same thing that, that we have C, G, A, G, F. And chorus should again be C, G, A, F. And the C, G, A, F, C, G, A, F is just popping up over and over and over and over. So with two little exceptions throughout this entire song, it's that exact same order. And that really makes life easy because then you can really focus on finding those chords and maybe even name the chords as you go through the first several times and just really get familiar with the notes that you need for that process. Now that we have those three main criteria figured out, this is where we sort of run into a choose your own adventure situation. 
There are timestamps for all of the different options. So if you know exactly how you want to approach this, you can feel free to skip ahead and otherwise just watch along and you'll see how you can also go step by step and really progress through this style of playing so that you can kind of understand the basics and then build on that a little bit and build on that a little bit and maybe a little bit more. We'll see how far we get. <laughs> So step one would actually be just taking the chords exactly like we've already seen them and starting to sing along. You don't have to like singing. You don't have to think you're a good singer. If you really, really don't want to sing, then maybe this we'll skip ahead to the part where we, where we walk through how to find the melody by ear. But um, everyone can absolutely do this. And singing is also a really important part of music making. You don't have to think that you are a good singer. That's not the point here. It's just coordinating what's happening on the keys with another instrument, which in this case is your voice. So for this song, All Too Well, we have our chord progression. It starts with an introduction. And you can just play those chords all the way through. And then when you get to where the melody comes in, you can start to sing. I walked through the door with you. The air was cold, but something about it felt like home somehow. I left my scarf there at your sister's house. Nobody died. I'm not a singer. I was singing. It's all fine. That's already option one. You can go through the entire song just like that. And you can already start to recognize the song compared with what you've heard on the radio. It's it's really, you have all of the key elements uh, just with this, these really basic steps. So then if we want to kick that up one notch, so let's call this level two. From there, you can start to add octaves in your left hand. And your left hand will then just be playing the name of the chord every single time. So when you're doing a C major chord in the right hand, you're going to have a C octave in the left hand. Um, and then when it's a G chord, you're going to play a G octave. A minor will be an A octave. And F major will be an F octave. And you can go through the entire thing like that. Um, I would use pedal just because it makes those transitions a little bit smoother um, and just change every time you play a different chord. And then it's the same process. Once you get comfortable with that, you can start to sing over what you're playing with your hands. I walk through the door with you. long as you go. That's level two. Level three is then starting to find what we call inversions. So instead of hopping everywhere all over the piano, um, you can start to figure out which notes are in common between the different chords and use that to help you find your way around a little bit more smoothly. So instead of hopping every single time, you sort of have to think a few steps ahead and you, ha you really have to consider all of the notes that go into each chord. So a C major chord is C, E, G. And then a G major chord, you can always sort of cheat with the other hand. I think that's a nice method for figuring this out. A G major chord has G, B, D. And then you can compare between the two hands. Okay, which notes do these two chords have in common? C is only in C major. E is only in C major, and B and D are only in G major, but both of them have a G. So that means to get from this C major chord, we don't have to jump all the way down. We can leave our fifth finger on G and then pick up that B with our thumb and play the D with our second finger. So then it's a much smoother transition. You don't have to hop over, you just the second finger is already ready, fifth finger is already ready, and the thumb slides down to B. And then from there, G major to A minor, anytime, there's another trick, anytime the, the root of the note, so the name of the note is right beside each other on the piano, G, A, that means that the chords don't have any notes in common, which means a is just one higher from G, so everything can slide up one. And since we know our scale, we don't have to worry about sharps, we don't have to worry about flats, we just know 
slide everything up one and you're ready to go. So from there you have from A minor, now we want to go to F major and F major. So maybe let's really fast. Well, A minor can stay just like that. And then F major, I'll play down here with the left hand. You can see F major has an A, which we have right here, and it has a C, which we have right here. So the only note that's different is this F. So you just kind of trade the second finger for the third finger. And that's how you get from A minor to F major, just by changing one note. Instead of hopping all the way over like that, or, or hopping from this A minor up to F major, or down to F major, it's really simple. And then from there we go back to C major because we just have this loop that's going over and over again. And conveniently we have a C and the, these two fingers just slide right back down to a regular C major chord. So that will take a little bit of practice. You'll have to get used to, you'll have to find your way around and find what feels right for you, which one, which transitions feel like the smoothest. And for the record, this is not necessary and there are no wrong answers. As long as you're playing the chord that's written on your chord chart, you are doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You're not breaking any rules. There are things that maybe sound a little bit smoother. There are things that maybe sound a little bit nicer in a certain way, but if you're playing the right chord, you're not doing anything wrong. So if you would do, instead of playing like this, if you would go to the G major chord, like this, for example, that's also not a wrong option. That's not a wrong answer. It's completely fine. It doesn't make a difference. You're still on a G major chord. You can still slide everything up one to A minor, and you can still just move one note to get to F major from there. And then you would maybe hop back to C major. Again, there's no one answer. You're free to use whichever inversions you want. So then let's hear how that would sound combined with the left hand. So the left hand, it would, whichever option you choose for the right hand, the left hand can always stick to octaves. It sounds really solid. We have a nice bass line that way. And um, then you don't have to learn anything new either. So that's a plus. Um, some things that you could do differently is, for example, before, when I jumped down to G, my left hand was also going down. If I'm going to do this inversion, I might jump up to G instead, just because it's a little bit easier and I can see both of the hands at the same time better. And it just sticks a little bit more to the central part of the piano, which sometimes has a nicer sound. And then when you're used to it, you can start to sing on top of that also. Um, maybe let's get to a different verse. Oh, your sweet disposition. take a little bit of getting used to but it's a really fun exercise and it's a really good like it's above coordination because you're, you're coordinating the hands already and then you're coordinating another thing in addition to that it's a win-win-win i would say so that was level three what could level four be level four is starting to come up with some sort of pattern so instead of just playing chords the whole time you're going to stick to those chords because that's the the basis of the style of playing and then you can start to come up with patterns. And again, there's no one right or wrong answer. Something like this usually sounds nice. Which for the record is a really sophisticated rhythmic figure. It, if you're reading that in sheet music, it's in four, four time and it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And it's not so simple to see that on a piece of paper and turn that into a rhythm that you can play really confidently. But when you just hear it, it's actually really straightforward to create. Um, you, 
don't have to play all of the notes at the same time. You could also do some sort of broken pattern. So you play the same notes in the chord. The left hand, I'd probably just stick to the octaves, maybe repeating. Um, but for example, you could do something like... feel fairly straightforward. So then let's see how that would look maybe with our chorus. this method um, what you can do is try to pick out the melody by ear so uh, maybe let's go back to the beginning just so that it's not brand new in case you don't know this song you can you've at least heard the melody a time or two so um, <laughs> in the left hand I think helps um, or you can even play the full chords but maybe a little bit lower we need a little bit more space in between for this for this song. I'll just do octaves um, so you have to find your starting note and that can take a little bit of trial and error for example um, often it's the first note of the scale that's the first note of the melody sometimes it's the fifth note of the scale in this case it is the C the first note of our C major scale um, it will take a little bit of playing around. So if you're not sure, you can play through your chords. And then usually you can sort of pick out by ear what that starting note is, because even if you don't like singing, you know what note is supposed to come. So just play that progression a few times. more straightforward if I'm singing along or singing a little bit or humming ahead you don't have to sing you can hum whistling is very hard to tune so I maybe whistling is a little more difficult but you can use any of those options to help you find the melody so I think it is worth taking a second to answer the question why should you consider playing a song with a chord chart just to pick out the melody by ear if you don't like singing why would you use this method if you don't like singing and it kind of boils down to on the one hand it's a really good exercise it's really good for your ear training and developing this skill helps you feel a lot more at home at the piano you're able to find your way around it you're actually much less likely to have memory slips if you're really confident at playing by ear um, and it's a really musical approach to playing the piano by not only relying on black and white dots on a sheet of music to help us figure out how we should be playing something but then there's also this element of pop music and with pop i mean anything that's not very strictly classical there are so many oral traditions in music this is not a notated language necessarily we have it all written down but 
so many musicians, recording artists, don't read music, they don't read sheet music, and it is not a reflection of how qualified one is as a singer or a pianist or a whatever, whether you can read sheet music or not, because really music all boils down to our ears, and sheet music has a lot of advantages. I have an entire YouTube video on reading with sheet music versus playing by ear, and that's all, that's all well and good, but this is really, in its essence, an oral tradition. It's not something that pop singers don't sit with a sheet of music and count their way through the rhythms. It's a very organic approach to music making, and there's a lot of rhythmic subtlety that goes into music like this. So if you were to sit down and try to figure out how to use a notation software to write down all of the notes and all of the rhythms in a way that sounds exactly like the recording, it would drive you crazy because there are so many ties and so many dotted notes and it still sounds a bit too square even if you get it just right and to really get an effective image of music like this it's not about writing it out on a piece of paper it's about making sure that your ears are really clear about what's going on in the music so i think it is worth running through that and doing this exercise and at least every now and then right just test out test it out play around with the idea and and see how you like it. So um, there are a few ways that you can do this. We, we've walked through finding the melody and then how do you do that hands together. For this particular song, I actually like it just with octaves. also play the blocked chords with inversions it can sound a little bit weird because we don't have the correct bass line that way and so it um, doing it hands together with something besides octaves or root position chords gets a little bit trickier it takes a little bit more playing around with the texture to get it just how you want it to sound um, but for example if you want to do the blocked chords I would probably play the melody an octave higher so that um, we have enough space between the hands without too much overlap and sometimes the left hand when it's all the way down here it just sounds a little too dark, a little too grumbly. So for example... keeping time with the left hand also just because it does seem I feel like it needs something a little bit pulsing um, to sort of move it forward a little bit and to give it a bit of rhythmic structure beyond that you can also that's another option that's also a very valid option is playing um, the bottom note of the chord and then the top note of the chord and then repeating the octave of the first note The point of this lesson is not to give you a definitive course in creating your own arrangements of your favorite pop songs. It's really just the basics of how to take a chord chart and then how to build on those basic elements a little bit so that you can feel more at home with this idea. And the more you, you, the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to feel and the more fun you're going to have with the process as well. As always, thank you so much for being here. If you have questions about anything, please let me know in the comments below or send me an email. And as always, happy practicing.